Uh, hi, everybody. David Allen here with uh, In Conversation. And, uh, you know, I don't do these often these days, um, but every once in a while, someone, something comes along and my bell gets rung. Ding, 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 ding. And uh, I know you can fill in the blanks a little bit, um, you know, in terms of, uh, of how you intersected with me, how you intersected with us. Let me tell you a little bit of my story. I heard from Robert Hendricks, our, our, our huge champion of our stuff, senior guy at Steelcase uh, in the U.S. And, uh, you know, he's been uh, researching and, of course, he runs that the, the place that makes all those Steelcase file cabinets we've all used for years, right? right. And, um, you know, a huge gtd -er, a great system guy, a great engineer, a great um, factory manager, really. And, uh, you know, he's been in and out or studied, you know, all kinds of people that are sources in the lean world out there in terms of systems uh, for moving things through work lines, et cetera. Uh, anyway, he said, look, I just ran across this guy, turned him on to GTD, he bought into it. And then I went to your site and oh my God, you know, you you just gave me the biggest PR blast. You know, I've seen that <laughs> a long time in terms of in terms of your testimony so far. And I'll leave that for you to, to everybody. Uh, meet Paul. Paul, I'm gonna uh, hit, the, hit the ball to the net to you and let everybody know in as long or as short a version as you want, mm -hmm. born where and how'd you get to, <laughs> to what you're doing. And you yeah. can you can freeze dry that, you can add water to it. Uh, you know, that's, that's, so who's Paul Akers? And how do you think uh, it will be fun that we're talking together? Well, David, I'll, I'll give you the short version. I've done it so many times, I don't want to bore people. Born in San Diego, um, you know, went to school in Los Angeles at Biola University. I'm basically a carpenter, as of the way I think of myself. And I started a business in 1997 called FastCap, which is a product development company, innovative products for woodworkers. And we make all kinds of cool, innovative products to help people do their work better, you know, right? to get things done better, if you will. And the products, uh, our products are all over the world, about 40 countries. Then I wrote a book about lean manufacturing. I discovered the Toyota production system in about 2000. And I wrote a book called Two Second Lean, and that book has taken off all over the world. It's in 40 languages, excuse me, not in 40 languages, 14 languages, and uh, just it's just crazy. And I'm a super productive person, and you're a super productive person. And I thought, I, I don't think I have it all figured out, but I thought I had a lot of it figured out. And Bob Hendrickson, our mutual friend, who is absolutely one of the most amazing human beings in the world, uh, he turned me on to what you're doing. And I had actually read your book about maybe eight or 10 years earlier. And I took some elements of it and utilized it, but I didn't utilize the system the way I was supposed to. And Bob really got me orientated. And when I really dove into it and started using it correctly, everything went crazy. And so I reside in Bellingham, Washington, now up by Seattle. And that's just basically my little bit of background. How does that do? Well, that's great. I mean, you know, come on, we can run down 43 different rabbit holes uh, to, to explore that, which sounds totally yeah. fun. Uh, carpenter, yay. So, I think of myself uh, as a carpenter. I like to work with my hands. I have calluses on my hands, and I like to build things. I built everything in my house, all the furniture, all the cabinets, everything I've done. And so I'm just so a you, builder. You made, made your construction as well as fine, fine tune. Yeah, yeah, all the fur, er, everything. All the furniture, guitars, everything, you name it. That guitar behind me, I think that's actually one of the first guitars I've ever built right behind me. Wow. Well, I have to, you know, we can delve into that as well. Um, uh, well, so running across getting things done, at least uh, on a second version. By the way, you're not the, you're not the sole universe on, or person on the, in the universe who has done that, that kind of saw my stuff to begin with. May probably rang right. a, little, a little bit of a bell, but you didn't quite get it yet. And there is a there is a huge difference between sort of getting this and really getting this. Completely. I'm sure, that's, I'm sure that's also true for any of the processes, whether it's Six Sigma or Lean or, or, or Kaizen or you know, any of those kinds of processes. But you can't just sort of do it. I guess you can. I mean, you can sort of do GTD. I was running with scissors. I mean, it's not dangerous stuff. You know, right. but in order to really get it. So maybe, uh, maybe you can delve a little more into what you dis what was the big surprise out of all of this? What what didn't you expect that actually happened when you 
when you dove in. I actually got another big question was what did what did dive in look like? Did you really change your system? Did you shift what you were doing? Oh, what completely. Was the between where so, you were and then what you moved to. Well, let me let me say this, and I'm I'm assuming. Can you hear me? Okay, David, everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all good. All right. Good. So let me tell the listeners what happened with me originally when I read your book, and it's really a simple story. I read your book. I said, this guy's right on, totally gets it. Uh, I agree with it. And the number one takeaway I got from your book the first time I read it was this, that your brain is this powerful tool and we waste it by trying to remember things all the time. And we clutter our RAM memory, if you will, if I remember when I first read it, was basically the essence. And we need that for processing what's coming at us, not for memorizing lists. So the idea is get everything out of your head and then free up your mind was the essence of what I took away from your book the first time. I try to distill things down to simple concepts because I'm a simple guy. And I thought that was 100%. And I took that information and understood it and utilize it to the best I understood it at the time. Now let's fast forward to Bob Hendrickson. Bob said, yeah, Paul, you know, that's kind of it, but there's a whole system. And the system really means this, hopefully I'm answering your question, David, is that mm -hmm. not only do we wanna get the things out of our mind, but we wanna get them into a system that then helps us be more productive. And what happened when Bob explained that to me, the first thing that just struck me so profoundly, and it's so simple, you might look at me like I'm crazy, David, is that we're getting those things out of our mind if we have to do something at home, something at work, something at the computer, something in the engineering department, into lists that are proximity oriented. So I say proximity, use a different word for that. What would be your word that you would? Uh, well, we, we use context. Yeah, context location right. tool or even psychology right so context and 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 that word for whatever reason didn't resonate with me so i use the word proximity and i explain it that way when i say to people so when the minute i get in my car i open up my wonder list and i look at i have to go to lowe's i have to go to home depot i have to stop by long's drug i have to to go to hardware sales i have to do this and then i organize those in the route that i'm going and all of a sudden, everything just started getting so simple. So when I walk into my office, I'm sitting in front of my computer. I go, I'm in the computer. I walk into the engineering department. I'm in the engineering department. I pull out my list, talk to Dennis about this, talk to Taylor about, Tyler about this. And then, the pro, and then I take that, that thing I have to talk to Tyler about, and I break it down into all the actionable steps, which I never did before. Right. And so this whole way of hyper organizing my life became like, oh my gosh, I had lists. I have, I have great lists. I, I used a one note and I had lists of, I had to do these videos and I had to do, I had to write this book and I had to do these things on my home, but they weren't proximity oriented, if I will, or they, they, they weren't related to how I was going to work when I walked into those areas or when I was in this environment. And that was just a game changer for me. Did I answer well, the question? A, you did. And you're, you are such a, you're such a great example of, you know, over the years, I said the people most attracted to GPD and the getting things done methodology are the people who need it least. <laughs> they are already the most productive, proactive, aspirational, positively fo future focused kind of people you can meet. You've just thrown yourself out of your own comfort zone and your systems yeah. haven't kept up with you. So that's why you know, I have the luxury to talk to people like you in my life because oh. you know, you're, the, you're, you are, you're some of the coolest folks around and you're, you're pretty much a poster child for exactly that. And to that point, can we back up a little bit because I think a lot of people listening to this um, might be interested in your story about lean and how you run your business. And then I understand from Bob, you became quite an athlete. Uh, you know, right. All this. Yeah. Your own you know, techniques and methodology about that. Um, so I'd love to I'd love to hear that story. Uh, we just uh, one of my partners uh, who has our our license and our franchise for the Getting Things Done training in Italy, uh, Luca Campetti. I just did a, an interview with him, and Luca is you know probably does certification. 
and etc. And he just did, which is apparently the oldest university in the Western world. And for GKDers, and for GKD in the university for the IT in the, in the IT the whole IT division of the, of the college. And so interestingly, I think that the idea of lean, somewhat a good friend of mine described, you know, GKD is lean for the brain. It would be nice to know, you know, what what the no waste system, you know, give me because you're you know, an elegant way to put things simply and practically. So let the folks right. know who are listening to this how you would describe what you discovered with lean. What does it do? What how, how did that affect your productivity and your the, the game you're playing? Well, lean is the simplest concept in the world, and it is in GTD is exactly that a great lean concept one of the best i've ever seen in my life but lean is simply this every day you are performing processes whether it be answering your emails whether it be going through your to-do list whether it be constructing a fence whether it be doing an engineering project or working on a marketing program that's a process you walk into the office you start and then at the end of the day you stop this is lean. In between the starting and stopping point is a whole lot of activity. In, the, in there is waste. There's wasted motion. There's waste. There's people waiting for information. There's overproduction doing things that you actually don't end up using. There's inventory that you put on the shelf. There's all kinds of waste. There's eight waste. And all lean is trying to do is take the starting point to the ending point and squeeze out the waste. So at the end of the day, you get 10 things done instead of two things done. And most importantly, you feel better about yourself. You feel like, wow, you know, things are really going well in my life. I'm very productive. That's all lean is. And so when you look at uh, getting things done, it's basically taking the process of the way you organize the things you do on a daily basis and on a life basis and squeezing the waste out so that when you go to do something, you get it done in a very systematic and thoughtful fashion. So for me, it was genius. It took what I was already doing and squeezed more waste out of it. So I was like, this is unbelievable. Did I? Did that kind of become clear what lean is? At least no, that was great. Yeah, no, that, that's great. I, that's actually better than, than most people I've heard try to describe what lean is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know it's, it's super elegant. So, uh, tell me your 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 athletics and how you applied that to, yeah. to conditioning, etc. So you know, but, you know I'm a t I'm 58 years old and. Uh, as an executive of a pretty good sized company and you know all that we all get wrapped up in running our companies and being wildly successful and doing all those things and it's very common to neglect our health so i travel all over the world i've been in 70 countries i work with some of the top leaders in the world whether it be in mercedes benz or huge construction companies all over the world and i've noticed this one thing david and I, i'm curious what you would think about this is i've noticed that and I'm going to speak specifically about men right now because that's who my audience is for this particular subject, is that top level men who are ambitious generally will achieve a great and high level of success in their business, in their career, whatever they're doing. That We're capable of doing that. But they oftentimes neglect their health and their relationships. So there are three key elements as i like to say in life there is your health if you don't have your health you have nothing there's your business or your career and then there's your relationships and i've noticed and observed from these men that most of them have these great businesses but oftentimes their their health you know they're overweight they got a pot belly you know they don't eat that well and they just let their they're not 18 to say the least and when you really get close, I'm close to a lot of these people. When you really get close, you know, there's quite a bit of crap going on in their relationships too. You know, there's, there's not a lot of harmony, unfortunately. And so I sat back and looked at myself and I said, you know, Paul, that's pretty much you too. You know, you're very successful, but your health sucks. Your relationship's okay. It's not great. 
And so I went about, and we're going to talk about health right now, because this is the essence of my new book, Lean Life, is how to have a, a, those three things in order. So I went about and I looked at my health. I said, I'm disgusted with myself. I'm tired of being 40 pounds overweight. How do I apply lean principles of great processes to managing the most important thing in my life, my health? If, I don't, if I'm not alive, I've, I've got nothing, right? So I went about doing that and I realized, you know, I was doing all kinds of things wrong, namely, number one, eating sugar, sugars in everything. And I just needed to eat more real food and stop opening packages. And if I was going to tell you the essence of what I did, it's just that. I didn't take any supplements. I didn't take any pills. I didn't take any vitamins. I don't take anything. I just don't open packages. And I make sure I never eat sugar. Now I eat tons of fruit. That's natural, but I don't eat any processed sugar. It's in salad dressings, it's in barbecue sauce, it's in everything, it's in nuts. You think you're eating nuts, you open it up, it says sugar on it. It's everywhere. So I just eliminated that out of my body and I went from basically 220 pounds roughly to 170 and two Ironman last year, which is unbelievable for someone in my situation, as busy as I am traveling all over the world, to be able to pull that off. And it wow, took me no about kidding. A year. Especially, especially, especially international travel. I mean, come on, then, you know, what food they give you on the plane. You right. Know, how, do you, how, do you, how do you manage all that? So, hey, congratulations. That's, 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 that's way cool. Yeah, and so it's very simple, really, what I do. Yeah, I love that. Have you, is there another book called Lean Relationships? <laughs> yeah, well, Lean Life's going to talk about that. And, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm, we're, we're having fun here just talking back and forth. And I just, I always like to give people just a quick snapshot of what is the problem with relationships, in my opinion. It's really mm -hmm. you because, and I say, you don't know yourself. The reason why most people are frustrated in their relationships, they've never stopped to take a close inventory of who they are and what it is they want out of life. What makes them happy? What, what really gets them going? And if you don't know yourself, how in the world can you ever possibly have a relationship with someone else if you don't know yourself? So step one is, first you need to know yourself. And for me, that took a 10-page document of identifying who I was, what made me pissed, what made me happy, and really understanding that and going through that on almost a daily basis. So I really knew who I was. And then I say, the person you love, the person you're with needs to do the same thing. And then you need to know that document from that person. So if you really know what floats your boat and what floats your, your partner's boat, if you will, you're going to be in a whole different league. And if you get your health, your relationships, and your career, that's the magical alchemy in my mind. That is it. There is nothing more to it than that. And that's what the book wants to deliver ultimately so who do you hear uh, who's in your audience i make an educated guess but um who do you like to have what what's your ideal group of people to be talking to well or ideal person it could be a person but uh, who, you know where, where do you think your message as you have crafted it resonates the most It's going to be a very funny answer, David. People who are disgusted with themselves. People who are not satisfied. People who want more. That's the audience. There is no demographics, whether you're a doctor, or attorney, a carpenter, or a mechanic. It doesn't matter. People who want more. But people who are satisfied will never understand what I'm talking about. I, I get the impression you're probably an unsatisfied person in a matter of speaking. I'm an unsatisfied person. I'm never content with just the way things are. I love the idea of moving up the mountain and changing my view. It's just magical to me. And some people are just happy to come home, pop open a beer and watch the TV. I want to know, I want to develop my mind more. I want to experience more. I want to live more. I want to meet more cool people. I want to see more fantastic things in the world. I, I, I want more. Yeah. I uh, mean, people have asked me over the years, what's a common denominator of people who take to GD? Mm -hmm. 
only been able to come up with one simple solution in some way, or that is, however that is, and then right. whatever that is. So it's people who are on some sort of a left growth track, to your point, that that are not. Um, it's a, you can be, you know, there's the zen of satisfaction with your dissatisfaction. Sure, absolutely. Right. Uh, and and right. I, I want to be careful when I say that disgusted thing because it kind of gets people off guard a little bit. But, you know, I, I'm a super happy person, right? But at the same time, I look at myself, and, man, you can do so much better than that. And I strive to do that. And I love, I love the journey. I want to get 10, I want to live 10 lifetimes in one lifetime. Hmm. What have you learned from wood, Paul? What have I learned from what? The wood. cutout. From wood? Wood. What have you learned from wood? Oh. What have you worked with all oh, you mean life? woodwork? What oh, you, oh. What have God. you learned from wood? Oh, what a. Nobody's ever asked me that question. Here, hold on. What have I learned from wood? It's alive. It wants to be shaped and crafted. It wants to, it wants to sing to you. It wants to mesmerize you with its beauty and, and, and how different it is and how- By the way, by the way, by the way, this may only be audio on my side. What, what Paul is showing me right now on the video is an incredible- it's an, it's, an, it's an octopus. It's an octopus made out of wood. And you're an artist, David, so you appreciate what you're looking at. This is like, this is museum. Wow. This is like, like crazy ridiculous. This is so gorgeous. Right. Right? And wood is the most magical medium to work in. And it's the medium that I work in. I, you want to touch it. You want to feel it. You want to you you be mesmerized by its uniqueness mm -hmm. and then and then here i'll go even further here this will be more fun okay so audio is running over and take a, a guitar like this and yeah and this wood sings to you and it's it's crazy it is the most incredible medium in the world to work with. Well, and I'm looking and at something that, that, I just, that could be- I go crazy when I think about it, and my whole house is filled with the most beautiful furniture that I built. I'm a little biased, and I, I, it's just like, I go crazy when I, when I get around it. So wood is, what have I learned from wood? I've learned, I've learned how to be creative. I've learned how to be, how to be uh, whimsical. I've learned how to, how to not be afraid to take a curve and, and be crazy about everything I'm doing in life and to appreciate the knots and, and, and the grain and the texture and the colors and just, it makes life come alive. Interesting. You know, as you're talking, I say, you know, I would probably relate to wine the same way. Yeah, yeah good, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it, it's never the same. It's always unique. It's always talking to you. I'm curious, is there an analogy in, in wood? Wine is never the same over time, and you never know how it's going to change based over time. I imagine there's a, a, a very subtle aspect of wood oh, to the same degree. Absolutely. Every piece is unique. Every piece wow. requires you appreciating whether it was deciduous tree or comfort or, you know, an evergreen. I mean, yeah, wow. It's just, it's crazy. I, I'm, I'm, I feel so blessed and lucky that I was attracted to wood shop when I was in junior high school with Mr. Knopf. For whatever reason, it changed my life. It made me learn the beauty of being creative and adaptive because wood is, wood is not like steel in that every piece of wood has a different character and how, it, how you machine it, how you hone it, how you sand it, how you finish it. So you have to be very adaptive and very willing to uh, be creative with what is handed to you instead of force it. Hmm. So it talks to you. 
It does to me. I'm 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 a nut about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy so, about it. More about your business itself. You you found a niche out there in terms of producing uh, tools for woodworkers. Or? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I I had a problem. Uh, you know, uh, building cabinets, you can see cabinets behind me there. And when you put those cabinets in, you screw them into the wall, you have to put a screw in the wall. But if they're high end cabinets, you really don't want to see that screw. So I just figured out a way to cover the screw with all different kinds of caps that were peel and stick that were actually stickers, if you will, but they're made out of wood, they're made out of plastic. So they blend and match with the cabinets beautifully. And the result was that was a home run product and it took off all over the world. And then I developed a laser leveling device for putting red lines on the wall for leveling those cabinets. So I took a technology that was used in more sophisticated trades like uh, uh, excavation and, um, you know, land, uh, you know, grading and things like that, and then applied it to cabinet making. And that became very popular. Now we have 800 products. And so, and the beautiful thing about this, David, is my core belief is that I believe everybody is creative and everybody has great things to contribute, no matter who you are. So we went to our customers, basically taught them lean thinking, how to eliminate waste. And they came up with creative ideas on how to do that. We take their products, pay them a 5% royalty, and then take their products to the market. So our products all come from the creativity of our customers, a very unique business model. And so our company just goes crazy and we don't have any marketing department. We don't have a sales department. We don't have an HR department. We don't go to trade shows. We don't do all the things that most companies do because we don't need to because the way we do business is our sales and marketing tool and everybody knows about us all over the world. And they go, that company's just crazy, crazy to work with. So, how, how many of you are there? There's only 50 of us, small company, but just dynamic, crazy. Wow. You know, super cool. And if someone were just starting, let's suppose I say, okay, I like to paint, but wow, that just sounds so cool. Um, do you have like a kit or, a, or something or, a, hey, if you want to do woodworking, you know, here's step one, two, and three, or here's, here's what you need to do. Is, is that a potential market? Or even if not, oh, what would know, you tell me? What, 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 what should I get first? What, what, what should I do first? What, what, how would you coach me if I... If I got inspired listening to you, you know, talk about oh, this. Oh, that's a very good question. Well, well, here's what I would tell you immediately. Just go to YouTube because there's something called creators on YouTube. And if you want to learn how to do any woodworking project, there are all these people working out of their home that are fabulous teachers. So that mm. would be the first thing I would do. And then, if you, and then if you have a little garage or a little shop, you can start ma buying some tools and equipment there. You could buy some basic stuff and start playing around. Or you could find a wood shop program. They have lots of them at all the trade, at all the tech colleges and everything. And just take a, a, sh a, sh a shop class once a week, you know, in the evening, and you'll be hooked for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, you'll never, you'll never stop. I mean, it's just crazy. What, other than that, what advice would you give a beginner or a beginner in anything? Well, it's, to be, it's what I tell everybody about everything in life. Uh, learn to crawl first. Start really, really slow and simple. Make something that you need, whether it be a trivet to put a hot plate on, a hot pot on, or whether it make, a, for you, a, a beautiful, I would tell you to go make a coaster for your wine glass out of bobinga or some or rosewood you know what i mean make something so simple but that you can say i made that and every time you set your wine glass on it you appreciate it and then go what else could i do could i make a little stand for my chopsticks or could i make my chopsticks and then every time you're eating so you start really slow and before long you have a house full of furniture <laughs> that's that's what I would tell you to do because you know for me David it all started with one simple thing in junior high school something called a modern deer it's this little deer that's really got a tall neck and two legs sitting on a little platform and it's the little cheap little project that they start us off with and when I made that I go 
that's beautiful. And I sanded it and made the edges all round and soft. And the, and the body was white and the base was made out of walnut. So the, the, the top was made out of pine. The bottom was made out of walnut. So there's a contrast of materials, just like you see a contrast of here, white and dark materials. And I just fell in love with it. And it all started from that. And then at 17, I built this guitar. And the, the next thing, you know, you went from something that simple to something this complex. So that's what I would tell you. Start really, really simple. Okay. So let's, let's talk to the GTDers out there. Okay. The potential GTDers that might want to get really started with GTD. You're now a GTD coach. How would, what, what advice would you give them? Oh, that's that even better. Good. So let's, uh, let's identify the project. Okay. The project is making your, your coaster. Okay. So there's your project and let's break it down into all the steps you need to do. And I think the first step would be to watch five YouTube videos on making a coaster. Okay. That would be the first step. The second thing would probably be after you've done that, go down to a wood, a local wood store that sells wood and buy a hunk of wood. The next step would be put that hunk of wood on your desk for, uh, for two weeks and just look at it and just imagine what it would be look like when it's supporting your coaster, right? And then the next step might be go to Amazon or go to, go to the internet and find out what tool, whether it be a lathe that you're going to buy or, or a bandsaw to slice it and, and acquire a few of those tools or enroll in the wood shop class so you don't have to buy anything and just do it at the wood shop. But I would break it down and start punching through that stuff. And then probably in less than four weeks, you might have that coaster that that wine glass is sitting on and you might be mesmerized for the rest of your life. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to knight you. You're now, you're now knighted, you know, Sir Paul, to be a GTD coach. Yeah. For somebody coming to you says so that wow, you you talk about this GTD thing. How do I get started? What coaching would you give someone who wanted to begin the GTD process? Well, I'm going to tell you how I do it now because I can't tell you every. I want to want to exaggerate. Almost every person that I explain GTD to, every person, they do it. And they come back okay. to me. It's changed my life. Wow. So, so how, how, how do I do it? It requires me spending doing exactly what Bob did with me. Bob, we were on a ski trip and I said, Bob, I know, first of all, I had deep, here's the key. I have deep respect for Bob, as you do as well. Bob is an extremely accomplished person and I'm an accomplished person. So I looked at him and I said, Bob is doing some amazing stuff. I, I respect you and I'm going to learn from you because I know what you're talking about. It's not fluff. So Bob, I said, Bob, I, you have three, we, three days with me on this ski trip to get me tuned in to getting things done. So I know it right because I know you use it. I've seen you use it. I want to do it. So Bob spent those three days with me getting me coached on it. What I do is a little different. I spend a minimum of 15 minutes to a half hour with the individual going through, downloading Wonderlist, getting it set up. And this is what Bob did for me. He set it all up for me. I get it all set up for him. I show him how I'm using it. And then I go through the process of getting everything organized and demand that everything gets out of your head. Nothing is in your head. You, the second it comes into your head, you stop at that moment and it's on a list and you're, and you're organizing your work. And by spending that, you know, 15 minutes to 30 minutes with them, literally working through it like Bob did with me, that's it, they're hooked. Did I answer yeah. the question? You answered it in stellar form. So thank you, Paul. You know, really great. So we're gonna kind of wrap this up a little bit. Um, first of all, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you and find out more about any of Yeah, well, that's really easy. All my information is readily available, phone numbers, everything on, on, on my website, paulacres.net. And what I tell people is I get so many communications with people around the world and I don't have any filters. I don't have any people that, you know, assistants that keep people from getting to me. 
But if you want to talk to me, WhatsApp or Voxer, because I do audio, David. I don't like to type much. I don't do a lot of emails. So you can just push the button on WhatsApp. You can write it to me or you can push the button, the microphone button and say, hey, Paul, I have a question about this or what do you think about this? And I'll reply back to you almost real time. It's people are shocked at how quickly I reply back to them. And that allows me to have good flow and be able to do that. Of course, I do that every couple hours. I got to be cautious here because I change my, I cha I actually change the way I do business because of you, David. So I would reply back to people in real time, like all the time being interrupted. Now I have process times, like every couple hours, I'll open up my phone and I'll process all my Voxer messages, all my WhatsApp messages in my email so that I can focus on the projects at hand that I'm doing. So I changed that radically actually as a result of you. So when I say real time, I mean, you're not gonna wait days to hear from me. You'll wait a couple hours to hear from me. <laughs> Super, very nice. I mean, you move up the food chain when your responsiveness is that sensitive. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. And so any final parting words for the world that may be listening or watching to this? Paul? There are some very wise people in the world that can really change your life. The question is, are you wise enough to listen? And thank you, David. I can't wait to meet you in person.